Hey guys, it's me Rob. Today's June 14th. I am beat. We just did uh, almost an all-nighter catfishing trip. Got home at like 4 and slept till 11. I had to get out and do some stuff. Me and Ch Chance is with me today. And uh, my lovely wife Diane is with me too. She's actually running the camera. Okay, so what we got here. See this? And I've seen a bunch of videos showing these and not explaining them. So we're going to explain this really quickly. Because we're going to show you today how and where to set up game cameras. Because I hear this a lot is, I put up all these game cameras and I never get any pictures of good bucks. And I'm going to explain to you today why you're probably not getting pictures of good bucks and how to fix that problem. season it started the quest for 200 is underway all right so today what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go through a few steps of placing cameras and finding the sign that you need to find so you're gonna get pictures of that buck you're after and not a whole herd of does a porcupine and six raccoons while those are great pictures it's not really what we're after is it so right here beside me is sign number one that you look for. This is a signpost rub. See this has been scarred. The tree's been rubbed multiple times oh, year after year after year which is pretty amazing. So what we have here is it's going to be a hub of activity. The deer are going to be coming from all different directions and they're going to pass this spot. The bucks are, not the does. And they're going to rub their forehead glands and rub this tree. And as you can see, multiple generations of whitetails have been doing it. This is an optimal spot to have a camera. Now keep in mind, you're probably not going to get a ton of pictures for quite some time. It's early, it's June, they're still in velvet, their antlers aren't completely developed, they're not feeling that breeding, that, that, that testosterone isn't there. So they're not going to hit this a whole lot. They, they'll kind of hit it every now and again when they go by, even though they're in velvet. As long as they have enough of a spread on their antlers to wrap around that tree. They'll rub their head on it now. So, finding a marking post rub is the number one, for me, it's the number one place to put a camera if you're looking for that big trophy buck, that big mature whitetail that you've been after. They're hard to find. A lot of times you'll find what they'll call a directional rub on a trail, or you'll find a frustration rub, and that's one that they put right into an area that um, is a staging area, right before they go out into a field, you'll find those. Or you'll find what I call shedding rubs, or uh, yeah, velvet shedding rubs, which are rubs in a cut with a bunch of small brush where they rub on everything to get rid of their velvet. Well, this is a mark and post rub, and they're unmistakable. It's going to be on a bigger tree, and it's going to be rubbed multiple years, you'll see, on that. Now, let me tell you about another thing. This is something you absolutely want a camera on, but here's the trick. Putting your camera in the right place on one of these is absolutely necessary. So let's go over a mistake that many people will make. As you can see, this marking post rub doesn't have a lot of big trees right around it. So the first thing somebody's going to do is they find this, they're going to panic, and they're going to think, ooh, if I can get it closer to this tree, I can get better pictures. That's a huge mistake. Let's show you why. Okay, so the closest tree I have to that rub is right here. So a lot of people are going to say, that's a perfect place. If I put it right here, and I face that, I'm going to get some great pictures. Sure. Once. That deer, he's going to move in up one of these trails, and he's going to spot that camera. That camera is out of place. He knows this like the back of his hand. It's too close to what he's focusing on. He's focusing on this area. He's going to see it, 
even if it's right here, especially in the evening. If you don't have a no-glow camera and he's walking up this trail that comes up through here, he's going to see the, the color change when the red comes on. They can't see the red, but they can see the shade change, and it looks like movement to them, and they're going to focus on it. And I know you've all got these pictures where you have a deer coming to a spot that, like you have a, a rub or something, and you have a camera on it, and he sees it, and he comes up and he's looking right in it. And then you probably never see him again, or if you do, he's off in the distance, right? Well, that's because he saw that, that red and thinks it's movement, so he comes and checks it. It smells like plastic to him, it smells weird, and no matter how hard you try, it's going to have human scent and battery smell on it. So, when you have a rub like this that you're trying to focus on, you need to keep your camera far enough away and in a weird spot that he's not going to focus on it. So, if I'm going to choose a spot to put a camera on this, I'm going to put it up fairly high. Chances here with me. He's 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 ticked off because we're not shed hunting. We're talking. Um, I want to put it up kind of high, out of the line of sight. So when he's walking to or from, he's not going to see it. And I'm going to put it in an area away from what he's focusing on. So where is that going to be? I know that's a hard thing to do. Well, to me, if I'm going to look through here and I'm going to find something that's going to keep him from focusing on it, I'm going. To I'm going to, okay, so where I'm going to go, so you have a scrape, and there's a scrape right here. The trail cuts from here and comes like this on this angle. There's another one here, and there's one kind of coming down this way to this. It's focusing on it. So if you want the distance, you're not going to get these high-end detailed photographs, but you don't need that. You just need to get the picture of the deer so you know which one it is. So I'm going to put the camera right here. And I'm going to put it up here, facing that rub. The trail's cutting like this, so he's facing this way and he's facing this way. They're facing like this, and they're coming down like this. They're not looking right here. So this is where you want your camera. So, let's do it. Let's put it. Do it. All right. So we placed our camera. We put a stick behind it, which I really wish. Here's one of my wish list things for camera guys, people who are making cameras. Make some type of device that is hooked to the camera that allows the camera to tilt in the position you need it, especially when you have to run them high like this. Putting the stick behind it works, but it's not foolproof because squirrels run up the tree and they knock that stick out. And then you come back after a month and the camera's pointing to the moon. But if we had a piece of something on the back of a camera that would allow a tilt or a side, you know, turn it side to side or up and down, that would be optimal. So, Primos, or whoever out there is watching this, think about that. It wouldn't be that hard to do, I don't believe. So anyways, we've got our camera up, we've got our tilt on it, we just went back and checked on that on the marking post rub, it's pointing in the right direction. So we've got our camera placed in the position we want. It's pointing down towards that, uh, towards the, the rub. We have everything lined up, now, I've seen this as I'm going through the woods. I've seen people put cameras up and they leave this. No, 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 no. That don't belong in the tree and the deer knows it. And they see it move. Now they're going to come check you out. I know I'm being picky. I'm being very nitpicky about this stuff. But there's a reason. You're dealing with an animal that lives here in the woods day after day after day. They know every tree. They know every stick. They know everything. And you know that's true because you guys have been sitting in a tree stand and you've broken a branch off. And when they come through, the first thing they do is they check that branch that's broke, right? Same thing with this. They're going to come over and check this out. They're going to smell that camera. And a big, old, mature buck is going to go, screw this. I'm out. So, we want to take that and we want to wrap it around the back like so until it's short enough. And then... What I like to do is I tie a couple granny knots in it just to hold it up there. To shorten up the ta tag ends. And then I'll tuck it up in the knot or something to that effect to hold those tag ends up out of the way so they're not swinging and attracting attention. Alright, so she's on there. She's ready to go. We're going to put our card in there, turn her on, and then we're going to go to our next spot. So we finally made it up here to one of our community scrapes. 
there's a series of them in a row here that goes back where they cross a logging road. The oldest one of these three big community scrapes is back near the road, but the, the activity just isn't there. It hasn't been touched, there's no tracks, there's no feces, there's nothing there. They may be using that later in the fall. This one here has new tracks in it, it's been scraped. The licking branches have been messed with. So this is the one we're looking for. We're gonna put a camera on this. Now I like these a lot better and a lot, well, I shouldn't say a lot better, but I like them for a better overall view of my deer population than a marking post rub. Marking post rub is gonna tell you what buck is passing through that certain area on that certain little post. But this one here is gonna tell you how many does, how many fawns, how many bucks you got. Because they all are gonna stop here. If you leave the camera here for two months, you're gonna have a pretty good idea of your complete and total deer population that are using this specific area because they're all going to stop here at one time or another. So there's a couple of different ways that you can show exactly, because a lot of times a deer is going to come through here and it's not going to stop. So to get them to stop, what I like to do is I like to spray this area with extreme interest by Black Widow. It's a, it's a curiosity scent that is... It's basically like an advertisement saying, hey, I'm new in town, check me out. And that's how it works. So you spray that in the scrape and you put some uh, branch butter up on that licking branch and all of a sudden, you now have a new member of society here that every single deer is gonna wanna stop and say, "Who? hey, who's this new guy? And as they stop, you get pictures of them. You can get pictures of everything from a fawn, yearling doe, old doe, seven eight year old buck to a to a yearling buck you're going to get them all they're all going to stop here just like chance is checking stuff out he's sniffing there's so much scent right here in a community scrape that even the dog you'll find coyotes will stop here and pee and defecate in one of these to mark to show that he was here it's it's almost it's kind of weird it's almost like social media for deer and animals in the woods so Right now I don't have any product. I'm not going to touch this up because it's being used. But like I said, you take your the extreme interest and you'll spray it here in the scrape and you'll put branch butter up on the licking branches. And now you've pretty much gone Facebook Live right there for deer. Pretty awesome. So remember these. And how you can tell that you're going to find a community scrape is See how big this is? I mean, I can lay down here and it, I won't even cover it up. You know, it's there six feet anyways, uh, uh, long, four feet to six feet wide. Piles, you'll see that it's, it's concave where they've dug out for so many years. And they'll always have a licking branch on them. And the licking branches will just be pounded and used. These here, you get dead ones here that they're using. This one here. So... Always make sure that if you find something that looks like that, it does have a licking, uh, 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 overhanging licking branch on it. Because if it doesn't, they won't use it. Um, but this is your number one spot to put a camera in an area if you're going to actually deer hunt it. And it re works really well, especially for bow season, because the deer are going to be, this is going to be their summer pattern that they're using on this. Come fall, this turns into the hub for every single deer that comes through here looking for does. In the fall, I'll, I'll come in here and I'll, I'll put Triple uh, X in it, Scrape Master, Branch Butter, and every single buck that cruises through here looking for a doe. Do bucks that you've never seen before, bucks that don't already, not even in your area, will hit this. This is an extremely important tool, a, a community scrape, for identifying deer and movement. So remember that for sure. And when you find one, you'll know you find one because they'll be great big ones instead of the little ones that you'll find under a spruce tree on a road. You're going to find something like this in a big intersection area where there's a ton of different trails cutting through. So we're going to put a camera on. And seeing they're going to be focused right here. Their, their trail here is traveling here, here, and going that way. So they're focused here. So we're going to put our camera over here. All right, hey, so we got the camera up. Same idea as before. You want to keep it out of their line of sight. They're traveling this way. Boom, boom, boom. 
camera's here facing towards them on the side. They may see it, but it's up high enough. And here's the, uh, another tip. Put it on the widest tree you can actually put it on. It hides it way better if it's on a big fat tree like this one. It's facing down. And I know most of the time you want your cameras pointing up or down. But they're going to stop in this. This is a focus area. They're going to stop on this and scrape and use that licking branch. So that's what you're really wanting to get the picture of is them stopping there. I could put one down farther, but I... It works better to have it so it's on an angle looking up or down, but they see it more often. So in this in instance, I'm going to put it so it's facing on their side right there at that scrape. So we have it angling down at the proper angle. It's up high enough so it's out of their line of sight, which would be right here. It's up here. They will look up if it's, they see that red light. But once they come through enough times, they, they, it, it'll just be part of the tree. And most of the time, the pictures we're going to get here are going to be daytime pictures anyway, so I'm not as concerned. And why do I say that? Why do I say that this is going to be more of a daytime spot? It's because we're up high, we're in that bedding area along this ridge that they're in here during the daytime. This isn't more, this is, the cameras that I've had in here, 99% of the pictures have been in daylight. So that's another reason I'm putting the camera like this. But it is up high enough so it's out of their line of sight. Okay, let's turn the camera on. All right, we got our camera set. She's on, she's ready. She's gonna take the pictures of the deer that are coming through. It's been used quite a bit. So I expect to get quite a few pictures coming through, but I want to assure that I'm gonna get pictures. So I'm gonna come back in a month, check the camera, make sure a bear hasn't eaten it. And I will doctor the site up with our Black Widow Extreme Interest and black widow branch butter. That will assure that any deer comes through is gonna check it out. So like I said before, think of it as like your social media website that you've got a new guy on there, you wanna check him out, right? Or a new girl, new guy, new girl, whatever. So they're gonna come through, they're gonna check that, they're gonna stop, you're definitely gonna get pictures. It's a great tool to use is the extreme interest because it's not a sex scent. It's an identification scent more than anything. They're going to come through. They're going to say, hey, who's this new guy? They're going to stop. They're going to scrape. They're going to use the licking branch. And then they're going to move on. But in that meantime, you'll get your pictures of that animal, whether it's a doe, fawn, button buck, 8-year-old, you know, 150, 60-inch deer. You're going to get those pictures. So remember to always dock them up with your extreme interest and your branch butter. It's extremely important to assure that you're getting pictures. Otherwise, you're just sticking a camera out here and you're going to get wind pictures. You're going to get pictures of a squirrel or a rabbit and the occasional deer that walks through. So I can't stress enough that anytime you're going to put one of these things out here, you have to put it, use every single bit of your knowledge, every single bit of uh, any tool that you can use to get the pictures you need. Because if you're not getting the pictures and you're not being able to pattern their movement, you're not going to be able to set up with a set up a stand site to shoot those deer. I don't know if there's anything more I should say because I, it's just perfect. Extreme interest, branch butter, camera. Simple. And just like they say, it's simple. It works.